interested, but we do have with us today Senator Ted Budd. Good Senator. morning. Well, good morning. We appreciate you adjusting your schedule and accommodating and uh, tuning in and, and informing us as to what's going on in Washington. Oh, it's always great to be with you all. Um, I wish I, you know, my motto is my prayer, and that's pray for boredom, and so far that hasn't been answered yet. We, uh, <laughs> <laughs> there's way too much going on, but we're, we're doing what we can. Well, you know, before you were elected senator, you, you served our district as a representative. And now, let's see, the House of Representatives, the lower chambers, we can't get a speaker. We can't get a budget. What, uh, what would you tell your former colleagues in, in the House? And remember, we're live on radio. <laughs> uh, let's mute for a second. Uh, sorry for the dead air. No, but look, I was there. I, I know Jim Jordan. I, I think he would be a great speaker. Um, and then, of course, you know, we've got the, the speaker pro tem just for the moment. Uh, Patrick McHenry, he's a wonderful leader. He's the chairman of financial services. Uh, he goes up to, uh, to battle against Maxine Waters each and every day. Um, he's smart as a whip. So I figure we win either way, but I'm a huge supporter of Jim Jordan uh, back since I came into the House in 2016. So um, I think we win either way. It's going to be a messy process. I mean, people say over and over in the last several weeks that democracy or, that, you know, a representative democracy is messy, and we're certainly seeing that. So uh, it's always, um, you know, while this hasn't happened in, in well over 100 years, um, we've had messes before. Uh, the, the Constitution is a beautiful design. It will uh, remedy this, and we will find a speaker. So it's going to be fixed. It just will take a little bit, and we need somebody in place to get uh, to get moving to solve some of these problems that we're facing right now. Well, you're absolutely right. I mean, we woke up a couple of weeks ago finding out that Hamas had attacked Israel, and now we find ourselves in a full-scale military uh, conflict. I guess we could just call it a, an out-and-out war between the two. Uh, your oh, thoughts on that? How, where's that going to lead us? Look, I've, I've been to Israel four times. Uh, I, I've seen there. I've I looked into the north where Hezbollah is. Uh, you know, of course, Palestinian-wise, it's different in Gaza, and uh, it's just absolutely heartbreaking what's going on. But I will tell you that the level of barbarism that we've witnessed in Israel, it is nothing short of evil incarnate. I mean, we've seen over 1,400 women, um, children, men brutally murdered, 30 Americans killed. I will tell you, this, uh, a couple years ago, uh, with Trump in office for four years, no wars, no Americans taken hostage. Um, you know, we didn't have the chaos. You didn't have Russia invading Ukraine. You didn't have North Korea spinning up their missiles. They were decommissioning that and, and taking a hiatus. So it was a peaceful world. A few mean tweets here and there, but I'll take those over a crazy world any day. Well, you know, going back to some of your colleagues, uh, there was an issue before this happened with the U.S. providing aid to Ukraine and all the funds that, that kind of played into why we're sitting here without a budget and working on a continuing resolution. Um, now, with funding going to Israel, do you see that as a problem in, in getting a budget passed? Well, I think we've got such a long history of supporting Israel and being them one of our greatest allies, us being one of theirs. Um, you know, I think there will come down to priorities. What we're watching is for a four-headed uh, budget monster, which, you know, includes um, border security, which we need, uh, Israel, which we need, and then we have Taiwan, which we have to uh, we have to make sure we protect our ally and keep them uh, as a deterrent from China invading. And then Ukraine, which we need clear objectives on, and we haven't gotten clear objectives from the Biden administration. We've gotten dollar signs, but you don't solve a war with dollars as much as you do with objectives, and then you fund the objectives. So we need clarity from them. I think um, it serves a great lesson. I think we haven't sent one single American uniform over there in, uh, um, into the, the battle, which is good. But uh, And I do believe in some ways we need to support them, but I want to be a great stewards of American taxpayer dollars. And then let's look who's managing this. It's Joe Biden. That's our greatest concern is uh, lack of objectives and lack of management capability, and they've screwed up so many things. But that's why Americans are reluctant to support the Ukraine effort. Well, straight, out of the, uh, straight out of the musical Best Little Whorehouse in Washington, um, the president has done a little sidestep uh, and is now saying, you know, maybe we need to do something with a wall at the border. Where did that come from? 
Well, hello. Uh, so, um, <laughs> look, I, I had a bill called the Build the Wall Now Act, and what it did is it, it, it was in, I had it in the House, we had it in here in the Senate. It was the first bill that I released. Uh, I dropped here in the Senate and filed. Um, and now, all of a sudden, he's using the contents of that, which bypasses all of the bureaucracy, uh, to go ahead and use uh, free authorized funds that were already there, billions of dollars, and go ahead and start building the wall. And, you know, while the bill is languished with Chuck Schumer uh, as the head of the Senate right now, unfortunately, Biden has taken the guts of my bill and used that to build the wall. Funds that are already there, he's bypassed his own uh, bureaucracy to build the wall. So uh, thanks for using my bill. Don't expect any credit for that, but um, I'm glad he's doing it. But it's, it's more political, I believe than it is anything else. I think it's window dressing for what he actually believes, and that's open borders, which leads to, well, tragically, we saw over 100,000 deaths from fentanyl last year, and that's personal. Well, and yesterday uh, we were talking with State Treasurer Dale Falwell, and I, I threw him a curveball by asking him something that he has nothing to do with, <laughs> but you certainly do, <clears throat> and that is the Biden administration has informed uh, banks not to reject loans that are um, being applied for by illegal immigrants simply because they're illegal in immigrants. Now, now, what am I missing here? We're, we're giving loans to people who came here illegally. Oh, my word. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's absolutely heartbreaking. It just shows you what they actually believe. Um, they don't believe that this is a, a great country. They don't believe that citizenship means anything. Um, we sure do, as uh, you know, folks from Iredell County and Davie County um, and the rest of North Carolina. And look, we want people to come here, but we want them to come the right way. Uh, immigration is fine, but let's put an L in front of it and make it legal instead of uh, illegal immigration, which we've had to the tune of about seven or eight million people since he's been in office two and a half years ago. So uh, in the few minutes that we have left, what else would you like to, to let our listeners know what's going on in Washington that's going to affect their pocketbook? Well, I would say let's see who, get, who we get for speaker. Um, let's start, watch out for those four-headed monsters, you know, that combines so many things uh, for spending. That will be well over $100 billion in my estimation. Wow. And uh, I think we, what we've seen right now is we've seen interest uh, growing so much for the federal government that it's beginning to impair our ability to do the other thing, uh, the roughly trillion dollars that we spend a year um, on non-defense discretionary plus defense on top of that. So we've got to rein in spending uh, because that affects all of us. It drives inflation. It, it harms our future opportunity. And ultimately, in a dangerous world, it harms our defense. So we've got to rein in uh, spending on things we don't need uh, so that we can make sure that we defend our republic in the future. Well, as always, we appreciate everything you do for us. We appreciate everything you do for the country, and welcome you to come join us in the studio live the next time. I mean, you're only you know 30 minutes down the road when you're when you're home. Well, I look forward to seeing you all in person at some point. Glad Fred's in the studio today. Get those extra large headphones out for him, and uh, Billy Buck. We'll talk to you later. Sounds good. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Bye. Bye. -bye.